Hi, I'm John Ruddick, and welcome to My Ride, the show that showcases your ride. And what do you know, the first episode's a classic. Stick around and find out what it is. In the hustle and bustle of sunny San Jose, California, the streets are unfortunately dominated by the electric car. But there are others that take a different route. A more unique path. One with more muscle. It's a rare sight indeed. Let's just say they call it the Roaring Twenties for a reason. My name is Pete Adams, and this is my ride, my 1923 Ford Model T Roadster. You know, I, to be honest, I had no plans on owning this car. Uh, a good friend of mine, Dan Fassler, who's in my club, NorCal Eradicators, was in the process of rebuilding his tea bucket, and he uh, happened to have some extra parts and pieces of the car that he was looking to sell to finance his new build. So in a whim, I just bought it with the promise that he would help me build it, and I wanted to go build the car for myself and have one of my own, but take it a different angle and not do the traditional uh, tea bucket build, and uh, not with the long chrome pipes, and make it more of a rat speedster type look to have one of my own. And so um, just bought those parts and slapped the car together within a year and a half, working every Saturday for a year and a half. And we're able to build a the car. The only original 1920 metal on the vehicle is the front radiator shout that says Ford on it, made in USA that's stamped in, and the front I-beam axle. Uh, everything else is modern or new. The frame is a custom uh, double Z frame, four or five. The frame was built by Gary in Los Gatos, his last name escapes me, but uh, he built the car around me. Being a very short guy, I needed to be able to have a low height, uh, low ride height to be able to get in and out of the car. Um, so with my measurements, we built the car basically around me. Uh, the motor is out of a 1970 Chevy Corvette. Um, it's a four bolt main motor. It's been bored to 388. Uh, the transmission is a turbo 350 transmission that locks into an 87 Camaro rear end 10 volt uh, one legger rear end. Uh, the other modifications that I did was these are 1934 window posts. Um, we had to shave into the body line of the car here to make those mount and fiberglass them in. Uh, fiberglass the 1935 dash uh, into the car, removing the original dash that was in there to give it more of a sleeker look. Um, that has bomber seats in the back and uh, non-traditional Schoenfeld racing headers that come out to a turndown with a 12-inch auger uh, in them. So the car also features uh, digital gauges by Intellitronics that I bought and placed in the dash. It's got a XM satellite radio. It's got a 100 watt stereo system. The car weighs maybe 1,300 pounds. Um, the horsepower, last time I dynoed it, it was right around 300 horsepower at the rear wheels. Um, zero to 60 time is probably right around three seconds. Um, it doesn't take much to get the car going. Um, it moves pretty fast, uh, being so powerful and so lightweight. Had to uh, experiment with different tires to keep the power to the ground but these Mickey Thompsons uh, pretty much do the best for me and grip in the road and uh, get me keeping the traction down. But every once in a while they do break loose. So I'm involved with the uh, NorCal Eradicators Car Club. I've uh, been with them for about four, almost five years now. And then we attend different car clubs, I'm sorry, car shows as a club. Um, all over the Bay Area, supporting different nonprofits. Uh, we're one of the more active clubs in the area with the traditional Saturday night cruise that we do every Saturday night through the South Bay, starting in Los Gatos, going to downtown Campbell, Santana Row, and then wherever else we decide to go from that point. So we were on a uh, 
memorial uh, cruise, and we were driving through um, San Mateo on uh, El Camino Real. And I had a San Mateo County Sheriff pull up to me and comment on the car, said he liked it. <laughs> and then shockingly, he said, get on it. And I kind of double take and excuse me. And he's like, no, really, get on it. I want to see just real quick. I just want to see what it could do and catch up at the next light. And I'm like, all right. So we pulled up to the next light, which was red. And when that light turned green, I took the opportunity. I'm like, this is my one time to race the cops and not go to jail. So when that light turned green, I roasted him and just took off. And I could hear him trying to keep up, and he just couldn't. And then we got to the next light, which was red. He pulled up, and he's like, wow, that SOB is fast. You be safe and take care. I'm like, thank you, sir. <laughs> um, the future of this car, uh, this coming winter, we're going to rebuild the top end of the motor, um, put uh, new heads on it, probably aluminum heads, new intake, uh, new carb, you know, just to get some, you know, refresh the motor some, get some more power out of it. I want to continue with the one-off look of it. So I'm actually going to be uh, taking the front grill off and putting a 1934 grill onto it. Um, probably going to have to chop about two inches, shorten it by two inches to make it look right. And then raising the intake some and slanting it. So that's going to take some modification. And then also replacing the radiator with an aluminum rating, racing radiator. So those are the next steps for this build, um, just to take it to that next level uh, performance and looks. Driving this car is kind of my escape. It allows me to get away, you know, for that brief moment, brief moment from reality and, you know, clear my head and, you know, just be just in another place, basically. You know, just it's a different experience driving this car. And it's uh, nice to just take it out and cruise it and just be, you know, the wind going through your hair and on your face and, you know, just be, seeing the, really the area in a different light and different view and driving this and just relaxing. ride on my ride go to highorbitmedia.com/myride